If you've been watching my channel for some time, you'll know that for the last five or six years I had been using the Wacom Cintiq 27 QHD for everything I created, whether it was art, video, music, or animation. So I'm sure you know how excited I am that Wacom now offers an updated version of the Cintiq Pro 27. I'll be reviewing this tablet today, so stay tuned. Quick disclaimer, this video is not sponsored by Wacom. My friend bought this with his own money and lent it to me to review for a few days. All opinions in this review are my own. If you don't know what a Cintiq is, it's a drawing tablet with a built-in display you can draw directly onto. This top-of-the-line creative hardware can benefit artists, animators, designers, and pretty much anyone who works on a computer. In this review, I'll explore all of the features of this tablet while sharing some comparisons to the older generation Cintiq 27 QHD and similar display tablets. I'll end the review with my overall opinion of this device from the perspective of a digital artist and full-time content creator. Let's begin by taking a peek at the display itself. Since the release of the Cintiq Pro 24 and 32, I have been wishing for a 27-inch model since that is really the sweet spot between a display that is too big and too small. While the entire tablet measures 25 inches wide by 14.9 inches tall, the active drawing area is 23.5 by 13.2 inches, which is 27 inches diagonally. Display tablets often have a bulky profile, but in the last few years they have slimmed out considerably. The Cintiq Pro 27 is only 1.2 inches deep, which is almost half as thick as the Cintiq Pro 24 at 1.9 inches, and that was only slightly thinner than the Cintiq 27 QHD at 2.1 inches. The design still feels quite bulky. I expected it to look more like the Cintiq Pro 16, but it doesn't. It's very basic, rectangular, and boxy, rather than rounded and sloping like the previous generations. However, the depth is more uniform overall. The resolution of the display is UHD, which is similar to 4K. It measures 3840 by 2160 pixels. That's roughly twice the resolution than the previous model, which was 2K or QHD. Some TVs and monitors are capable of resolutions that are double that at 8K, but UHD is still the max you'll find on any high-end drawing tablet. If you create art or designs with a lot of really fine details like stippling or hatching, UHD resolution will make those details appear crisper when you zoom out, and if you're editing 4K video, it goes without saying that you need a UHD display. The Cintiq Pro 27 display also refreshes at 120Hz, which is twice as fast as any previous Wacom display tablet. In fact, no other display tablets support more than 60Hz, and no I'm not counting phones or tablets with pen input. In layman's terms, a faster refresh rate allows the display to react more quickly to your pen input. For instance, the mouse cursor movement and brush cursor will appear more fluid rather than choppy. Scrolling and other types of quick movement are also noticeably faster. Artists will appreciate the faster refresh rate when doing zigzag shading and other repetitive quick gestures like hatching. Aside from being easier on the eyes, a faster refresh rate also makes for nicer looking recordings of your display, because there isn't that strobing effect you get when you cannot match the refresh rate to your camera. There is still some distance between the cursor and the pen tip when making long strokes, but it's less noticeable. It's a significant improvement over 60Hz displays, which have more cursor lag, even with short strokes. As far as everyday drawing is concerned, the difference can be subtle. I do agree that 120Hz feels a bit better, but I've been able to draw just fine despite having used 60Hz devices for my entire career up until this point. If you're in the game design field, many gamers use 120Hz displays to reduce lag, so having a faster refresh rate would probably be more of a benefit to artists in that industry. Another important feature of any display tablet is color accuracy. The Cintiq Pro 27 can display in 10-bit color if your GPU supports it. It covers 99% of Adobe RGB. It covers 98% of DCI-P3, which is the film industry standard. It's Pantone and Pantone Skin Tone validated, meaning it accurately represents skin colors. And it has support for HDR Gamma, which allows you to view and edit HDR video. Compared to the Cintiq Pro 24, the Adobe RGB coverage is the same at 99%, and both are slightly more color accurate than the Cintiq 27 QHD, which is 97% of Adobe RGB. The brightness of the Cintiq Pro 27 is nearly double that of the Cintiq Pro 24, with the Cintiq 27 QHD being somewhere in between. Since you can always turn the brightness down, it's preferable to have a bright display rather than one that is too dim. Dim displays are difficult to see in bright environments, and may be more difficult to properly calibrate. 
The contrast on the newer Cintiq Pros is typical at 1000 to 1, but the Cintiq 27 QHD has slightly less contrast at 970 to 1. This means that the richness of the darks and brightness of the lights will be more discernible on the higher contrast displays. A higher contrast can also reduce the appearance of banding and gradients as one color gradually fades to another. The display is similar to the recent Wacom Cintiq Pros. It does not have a heavy surface grain like the Cintiq Pro 32. It feels very similar to the Cintiq Pro 27 QHD and the Cintiq Pro 16. I say similar because typically when you first get a display tablet, you need to wipe it down and break it in, or it feels a little rough. Since this is not my tablet to keep, I won't be able to use it long enough to say for certain why it has slightly more friction, but it does. Once I get a unit to review long term, I will be sure to give an update on that. I don't see any parallax issues, and the display does not distort when you press firmly on it. Overall, the Cintiq Pro 27 has an excellent display that looks great. It feels really nice to draw on. Speaking of drawing, let's move on to examine the pen. Along with this tablet, Wacom has also debuted the Pro Pen 3. I didn't think there was much room to innovate with a drawing tablet pen, but Wacom has surprised me here. I'm sure Wacom has received a lot of complaints about their pens. It's too heavy. It's too light. The pen is too thick. The pen is not thick enough. You can't please everyone. Or can you? The Pro Pen 3 comes with interchangeable parts, so you can now customize the pen's weight, grip, thickness, the quantity of pen buttons, and the center of balance. And if you have kids, you can come home to this. The pen comes with two rubbery grips, four button plates, and one balance weight that can be rotated 180 degrees to shift the weight of the pen. The base pen is very thin and light like a pencil. The top end is plastic, and the bottom end that screws off is metal. You can slide on the familiar flared grip, or opt for a flush grip. If you use the grips, you'll need to swap out the button plate for the one with raised buttons. Be careful though, the button plates are extremely fragile. There's only two thin threads of plastic holding each button on the plate. Don't be surprised if one of these breaks off when you're changing the button plates. I'm sure these are replaceable, but dang, these are cheaply made. I will say that without the rubber grip and the eraser, the pen looks very entry level. Though it still has a premium feel, it looks a lot like the pen that comes with the Intuos. Superficially, it's very out of place bundled with such a high-end tablet. I'm willing to bet that one of the benefits of making the pen modular is that it cuts down on waste. This single pen replaces at least two or three other pens that would have to be manufactured with no guarantee of ever being sold. At least if this Pro Pen 3 ends up in the landfill, it will be one pen rather than three. And because it's easy to separate the rubber, plastic, and metal, that could make it ever so slightly recyclable, though that may vary from place to place. There has been no change to the pressure sensitivity for the Pro Pen 3. 8,192 levels of pressure is still the top of the line for drawing tablets. However, that is a huge step up from the 2,000 pressure levels of the Pro Pen 1, which is the only Pro Pen that can be used with the Cintiq 27 QHD. Honestly, I haven't found myself struggling to use 2,000 pressure levels. But recently, art apps like Painter and Rebel have improved their opacity control when linked to pen pressure, making 8,000 pressure levels much more useful for getting a smooth transition between light and heavy opacity. One feature that I do like about the Pro Pen 3 are the three buttons on the pen rather than two, which is standard. This is a welcome addition for 3D artists because you need three buttons to pan, zoom, and rotate the camera. But that extra button could also come in handy for digital art or just about anything. I like to set two of my buttons to right click and the resize brush shortcut. Now that I have a third button, I could set it to erase, pan, or maybe even straight line mode. I'll have to spend some time with the three buttons to figure out what is best. One thing I don't like about the pen buttons is that they feel rough compared to the previous generation pen buttons, which were smooth and glossy. Although this pen is meant to be more comfortable, it just isn't in my opinion. The pen holder for the Cintiq Pro 27 is interesting. It's a cradle that the pen lies inside of. There are screw holes for it on either side of the tablet, and two on the top. Insert the stand and use the thumb dial to tighten it. You can get it to grip firmly to where it doesn't wiggle around, but then I found it hard to use the dial to unscrew it. It took a lot of extra force, so you may want to just spin the stand to loosen it. You can angle the stand as well if you don't want it to be parallel to the bezel. If you plan on using both sets of express keys, avoid placing the pen holder on the sides because it will block those keys. You can attach it to the top on the left or the right instead. This is what I prefer. 
The only real complaint I have about the pen case is that it opens too easily. It actually popped open unexpectedly the first time I attached it, and the faceplate could have broken or been damaged because it fell to the ground. There should be more resistance or some sort of latch or button that ejects the top of the case. Another idea is a drawer that slides out. Another observation is that compared to the previous Wacom pen holders, the plastic feels sort of cheap. Maybe it's meant to be lightweight and uses less plastic, or perhaps it's one of the parts made from recycled materials. I do like how the pen accessories are housed inside the case and aren't too cryptically hidden. Paper has been used in place of plastic baggies throughout the packaging. It looks a little strange at first, but just think about how much plastic would normally have come with a device like this. I really do appreciate the effort being made here by Wacom to reduce their impact on the environment. The stand accommodates all configurations of the Pro Pen 3, and even older generation pens can fit in the stand. Well, except the airbrush, of course. Stupid airbrush. Since there are four places to mount the pen holder, you could have four of these attached, one for each pen. Despite my minor gripe, this is the best stand I have ever used for a pen. It holds the pen securely, and it's easy to put down and retrieve the pen. The pen comes with 10 replacement nibs located in the pen holder. There are five standard nibs and five felt nibs that make your pen feel more like a felt marker. These nibs are about double the length of the Pro Pen 2 nibs where they protrude from the pen, and just a hair longer than the Pro Pen 1 as well. The Pro Pen 3 nibs are not cross compatible with previous generation pens. I prefer the feel of the longer nibs, it gives you a bit more of a gap between your fingers and the screen. The Pro Pen 3, as with many of Wacom's pens, can sense the angle of tilt and the bearing of the pen tip. There are 60 degrees of tilt recognition, and tilt sensitivity has been improved over previous generation pens because the tip of the Pro Pen 3 is able to tilt closer to the tablet surface. That is, if you remove the grip. The flared and flat grips reduce the maximum tilt range of the pen because they push the tip away from the surface and cause friction when they rub against the display. Now you can do pencil shading while holding the pen vertically and get a really nice result. Unfortunately, rotation is not supported by the Pro Pen 3, but you can still use the Wacom Art Pen. Why rotation is still a niche feature, I don't understand. It really should have been added to the Pro Pen 3, in my opinion. Photoshop, Painter, Rebel, and a few other apps support rotation, and the ability to rotate a flat dab or angle a palette knife is crucial to emulating traditional art. That's not to mention that Wacom is the only tablet manufacturer with pens that support rotation. It's such a huge opportunity missed, in my opinion. In another surprising change, Wacom has removed the eraser from the back end of the Pro Pen 3. By default, one of the three buttons is set to erase. I find it kind of awkward to hold this button since it's so far down. You might want to move it closer to the tip if you use erase often. While I do find the eraser useful, I can also live without it. It's worth noting that the eraser can do more than just erase. It can also blend, invoke a secondary brush, and can even be used for drawing since it's as pressure sensitive as the pen tip. You can still invoke these features by holding the erase button on the pen and then selecting a different brush if your app supports that. No eraser also means that you're going to wear down your nibs faster since all of the friction is now concentrated on the pen tip. I have to admit that I really don't like this pen as my everyday pen. Rather than looking at the Pro Pen 3 as a successor to the Pro Pen 2, I see them more as different options. I will probably use the base configuration of the Pro Pen 3 as a pencil when I want maximum tilt, or perhaps when I use 3D or other apps that benefit from three buttons on the pen. Fortunately, you can use the previous generation pens with the Cintiq Pro 27, so if you like having an eraser, you're not out of luck. I will be using the Pro Pen 2 and the Pro Pen Slim as my primary pens. One thing that was holding my old Cintiq 27 QHD back was the fact that I have all these pens that I couldn't use because they were too new. Now I have loads of pens I can use on the Cintiq Pro 27. And best of all, each pen can be programmed with different settings, and some apps like Painter will even let you assign a unique brush and color to each pen. I bet you're wondering if the Pro Pen 3 is compatible with previous generation tablets. It's not. And strangely, it doesn't even work on the Cintiq Pro 16 second generation. If this is a recent Cintiq Pro, shouldn't the Pro Pen 3 work on it? Next, we will take a glance at the features on the exterior of the tablet. The Cintiq Pro 27 has a touch-sensitive display that can sense gestures for navigating your computer and for zooming, rotating, and panning your canvas. Anything you can do with a mouse can be done with multi-touch instead. 
As with the Cintiq Pro 16 second generation, multi-touch has been refined on the Cintiq Pro 27. From a technical standpoint, touch is more reliable and it performs better than even the Cintiq Pro 16 second generation. It feels very fluid and responsive. If you want to disable touch, you can do it with an on-off switch on the back of the tablet near the top right. The older Cintiq Pros and even the Cintiq 27 QHD and Cintiq 24 had a touch strip on the front, but this newer model has a physical switch that you have to slide in one direction or the other. I personally like the touch strip better because it was easily visible. I have to spend a bit more time trying to locate the physical switch when I toggle touch, which is something I do often. I also liked having a touch button to launch the touch keyboard, but admittedly, I didn't use it that often. I suppose there are pros and cons to either design. I have accidentally pressed the touch strip while drawing, but it's never been detrimental to my work. I can also understand that the LED lights are a visual distraction that catches your eye. Also on the back of the device are two round buttons. The first concave one is for power. A blue LED shows when the device is on and the second flat button opens the display properties. I will come back to this. The Cintiq Pro 27 has eight express keys, four on each side, located on the rear in a grip orientation similar to the Cintiq Pro 16 second generation. The older Cintiqs had external express keys, but the Cintiq 27 QHD was the first to remove them and instead uses a remote that docks magnetically to the bezel. Having express keys built into the device can come in handy, but I can't say I'm a fan of the placement on the back. I can understand the logic for the Cintiq Pro 16 because you might be holding it closer to your lap. But for a large tablet like this that will either be on a stand or a monitor arm, it just adds fatigue to hold up another arm. The way the grip is designed does encourage you to hold onto it, which relieves your lower arm muscles a bit, but your upper arm and shoulders will still get tired after a while. I just don't see myself holding both arms up like this while working for long periods of time. It's much easier just to use the shortcuts on a keyboard rather than bother with the express keys. The express key grips flare out like a joystick and they have a rubbery surface that feels like the steering wheel of a car with a groove to dock your hand inside. Although if you have large hands like me, your fingers might feel too long and the button placement slightly awkward. It doesn't feel very ergonomic to me. Even if I didn't have gorilla hands, the button layout is confusing. It's hard to get my bearings. I think a more linear orientation is easier to find with your fingers and doesn't force you to think too much about it. The top buttons wiggle in place. The side ones do not. The plastic is glossy and sticks to your fingers in contrast to the smooth texture of the grip. While the buttons are laid out to where you can still press them while holding the pen, the placement of the older Cintiq 24 from years ago, which had the express keys mirrored on both sides of the front of the bezel, was more convenient. However, as I can recall, accidentally scraping the pen and my hand across the buttons when they were embedded in the front of the bezel wasn't very comfortable either. The express key remote was a great step up because you could move the keys where they won't get in the way, or you can put the remote down on your desk, or even hold it in your hand. Although it is a heavy device with hard edges and not smooth and ergonomic like the Cintiq Pro 27's express keys. I get the logic here. When you think about it, what are some objects you hold for long periods of time? A steering wheel for a car and video game controllers are some of the top ideas. Sure, people hold remotes, but not for the entire time they're watching TV. They eventually set it down. Fortunately, if you do like the Express Key Remote, you can use it with other Wacom devices, so it will work on the Cintiq Pro 27. I'm not surprised that the Express Key Remote does not magnetically stick to the Cintiq Pro 27, considering the slim bezel served as an eviction notice. So the only option is to rest it on your desk, or the extension table accessory, which I will come to later. On that note, I think full color physical keys that you can customize with text and graphics are far superior to blank buttons which are difficult to memorize. If Wacom could upgrade the EK remote to do that, it would be much more effective as a productivity device. While I feel the express key grips on the Cintiq Pro 27 aren't so great for modifiers that have to be held down, like shift, alt, or control, they will suffice if you just want one or two physical keys that do something like bring up the touch keyboard, toggle pen input to another display, save your file, or some other function that you don't do frequently. Okay, enough with the express keys. Let's talk about the weight and build quality of the tablet. Compared to previous Cintiqs, even some of the smaller ones, the bezel on the Cintiq Pro 27 is unusually thin. A wider bezel gives you room to rest your palm, 
and a buffer zone for your pen so neither abruptly runs off the edge while you're drawing. I liked having that buffer zone to rest my hand. Now the pen quickly runs off the edge, and the outermost areas of the bezel snag the pen tip as you go past it. In order to compensate for this, you can zoom out and use the UI background as your buffer zone, but that means you can only utilize a fraction of your display for viewing art as you're working on it. Although the display is lower resolution, I can work on a larger image on the older Cintiq 27 QHD. Another noticeable difference is that the larger bezel takes up more desk space and blocks more of your other monitors if they're behind it. The Cintiq Pro 27 feels like it's not even there. I can see past it much more easily than I could with the massive Cintiq 27 QHD I was using. The thinner bezel does make the tablet feel smaller to me, even though it has the same screen size as the Cintiq 27 QHD. Although this change is sort of a trade-off, to me, the slim bezel feels like another decision that made Wacom's most high-end tablet take a step back. I think a middle ground could have been achieved, more like the Cintiq Pro 16, where there is at least some bezel width to take advantage of. Another notable difference is that the Wacom logo that typically appears on the front of display tablets is quite transparent. I like that because it doesn't draw your eye to it as much as older models did. And it's less obtrusive when recording your screen. Moving on to the weight, Remarkably, the larger Cintiq Pro 27 is about the same weight as the Cintiq Pro 24 at 15.9 pounds. That's without a stand or any accessories attached. The Cintiq 27 QHD weighs 19.8 pounds, which is a significant difference. Although the display is wide, it's relatively light and thin enough to where you could easily transport it to events if you keep the original box or find a padded case for it. Another big high five to Wacom for being considerate of their environmental impact. The body and optional stand for the Cintiq Pro 27 are made from over 50% PCR plastic, which is a resin made from recycled plastic. Although I have a feeling at this rate our Cintiqs may outlast us. The build quality of this device is exceptional. It feels very solid and well built. The display feels dense like a large book. There isn't a hollow feeling in the back like you'll notice in some of the older Cintiqs. Here's a surprise feature. Those holes you use to attach the pen stand to the bezel have quarter inch threads, so you can screw on a camera, microphone, lights, and more. As a content creator and live streamer, I can really appreciate this feature for being so simple yet useful. In my earlier days, I used to put a webcam on a tripod behind my Cintiq, but I had to be careful not to move the display or I might knock over my camera. Now I can attach a camera to the Cintiq instead, so I don't have to worry about that extra piece of gear on my desk and if I need to move my display, the webcam moves with it. The cons to this feature are that a microphone, unless it has a shock mount, will probably not be a good idea to attach to your display because it will pick up vibrations from your tablet while you're working on it. There's another reason not to place a mic here, but I'll come back to that. A photography camera could be used when your display is upright, but I wouldn't attach anything heavier than a webcam or you risk breaking your camera when tilting or rotating the display. While this isn't a better solution than properly mounting your microphones, cameras, and lights, it could be sufficient for low-budget recording, live streaming, or video chat. On that note, you won't find any internal microphone, headphone jack, or SD card reader on this device like you would on the previous generation Cintiq Pro 24 and 32. Those mics were never very good, and I don't use the headphone jack, so I can live without those. But I'm disappointed that the SD card reader was not included on this version of the Cintiq Pro like it was on the 24 and 32. I would have found that very useful. If you've seen my other videos about the larger Cintiq Pros, you'll know that fan noise is what's going to be the most significant factor for me. As you well know, I record myself, and I can't have a fan right next to my microphone or it will spoil the audio. The older Cintiq Pros have fans that come on intermittently. If it weren't for the fact that I record, the noise wouldn't bother me, but it does. Sadly, the Cintiq Pro 27 does have audible fan noise. It's a deep whirring sound with a high-pitched whine. And the fans are located at the top where a microphone could be placed. What's worse is that the fan noise does not have a consistent volume, which makes it stand out more. The Cintiq Pro 24 and 32 were quite loud until a firmware update allowed the fan speed to be turned down. As of this recording, I couldn't find an option to turn the fan to low, but I do have hope that fan control will be offered in a future update. 
Compared to the Cintiq Pro 16, which has fan speed set to low but is still audible, the 27 Pro is significantly louder. I paid extra for a quiet CPU fan in a special case, which really keeps the ambient noise down in my studio. So this added fan noise is a huge disappointment for me as a content creator. I'm not sure why the older Cintiq 27 QHD was silent, but these newer tablets aren't. Is the fan noise so bad that this device is unusable for someone who isn't recording audio? Probably not. It's quieter than most laptops. I'd say it's like having a desktop computer or laptop right next to your mic. That's something we as professionals are trying to avoid. Now let's see what the Cintiq Pro 27 is compatible with. There are connection ports on the back. If you have a graphics card with the proper connections, like this NVIDIA GTX 1080, there are several ways to connect the display to your computer. First, if you have a USB-C port that uses DisplayPort Alt Mode, you can connect the Cintiq Pro 27 to your computer with a single USB-C cable for video and tablet input. Second, if you have an HDMI 2.1 port, you can connect it with one HDMI cable and one USB-A or USB-C cable. Third, which is what I will be using, is the Mini DisplayPort 1.4 connection and one USB-A or USB-C cable. Depending on how you connected your device, you may have an open USB-A or USB-C port on the back of the tablet. I am pleased to report that these ports can be used to connect peripherals, and they work independently of each other. I can charge devices, access storage drives, connect a USB hub, add a wireless dongle for the Express Key remote or a keyboard, and more. By being on the back and covered by the optional faceplates, the USB ports are challenging to access. But when they were on the side of the bezel in the previous generations of Cintiqs, they would get in the way, especially when tilting and rotating the tablet. I just want to leave some devices plugged in permanently, so this is more than enough to make me happy. And honestly, I was surprised that the ports work. I would be mindful of what you plug in back here if you're tilting and rotating the display often. Why these ports are not advertised as being usable, I don't know. Maybe they eat up the USB bandwidth and can interfere somehow. I will have to wait and see. So far I have my Stream Deck plugged in, and I might use the other one for something since it's USB-C. This is a hidden gem feature for sure. Included with the tablet are some 1.8 meter long PVC free cables. There is one USB-C to USB-C cable, one USB-C to USB-A cable, one HDMI cable, one mini DisplayPort to DisplayPort cable, and one brick-sized AC adapter with power cord, which is one meter long. This should be enough to connect to just about any compatible computer. And best of all, the video and data cables are not proprietary and can be replaced should they become damaged. The cables are concealed by the faceplates and are managed with a zip tie-like thing rather than sprouting from the top as with other display tablets. The Cintiq Pro 27 is compatible with Windows 7 and later, and Mac OS 10.15 or later, but you may also be able to get it working on Linux with specialty drivers. Next, I'll briefly mention some of the optional accessories you can purchase for the Cintiq Pro 27. Sold separately, you can attach a Kensington MicroSaver 2.0 lock to the slot on the tablet to prevent theft. There is an interesting tray accessory called the extension table that can hold a keyboard, a phone, or a sketchbook. This can be affixed to the display on either the top left or right. There aren't any folding legs on this model, so a stand is required. Wacom offers a new Ergo stand, designed especially for this tablet, which goes for $499.95. The stand has a base that looks sort of like a monitor stand. It definitely is far less bulky and more elegant looking than the previous generation stands for the Cintiqs. It's also much easier to install. I'd say one of the simplest things I've assembled in a long time. Although sleek, the stand is very solid and made from mostly metal. It gives you a decent range of tilt and rotation. While rotation is easy and offers enough resistance so that the tablet does not accidentally move when drawing on it at an angle, it feels difficult to tilt the display, and you cannot fine-tune the resistance. The stand is also difficult to slide when I want to reposition the base. And the base is awkward to pick up, not to mention heavy. I don't have an exact weight, but the box is 34 pounds, so around 30 pounds or so. That means with the display attached, you are looking at around 45 pounds on your desk. The grips on the back allow you to more easily grasp the display. This is a neat feature, but the express keys can get pressed by accident. If you grasp them the right way, it can help to keep thumbprints off your display. Unless you plan not to move the stand much, and you like the design aesthetic of it, 
I would recommend saving $500 and take advantage of the 100mm VESA mount on the back and attach it to something else. After this review, I will be using a monitor arm for the Cintiq because that makes the tablet much easier to reposition on your desk. You'll get a wider range of tilt, rotation, and forward and backward motion, and you can fine tune the resistance. Plus, an arm is not as heavy as this stand at less than one third of the weight. I will also mention that the Zoot system does have a kit in the works for the Cintiq Pro 27. This is a revolutionary type of stand that is definitely worth checking out if you're into ergonomics. It uses magnetic braking, which makes it much easier to tilt than the Wacom Ergo stand. It can also be adjusted on your desk without a lot of hassle. Because of the boxy nature of the bezel and the slim profile, you might even be able to mount this tablet to a traditional artist easel, though you better be certain it won't topple over. In an overhaul of the driver software, the Wacom Desktop Center has been revamped into an all-new experience called the Wacom Center. This is a dashboard which contains information about your devices, controls for modifying display settings, updates for drivers, and all of the functions you would normally find in the Wacom tablet properties. I like that under Devices Manager, I can see a visual of my tablets and which pens are linked to them. There are also buttons to check the driver status and restart the driver if it isn't working properly. Sadly, you now have to launch to the display settings with a button on the back of the tablet. Even worse, you have no choice but to use the express keys to navigate the menu. It even teases you by showing you what look like touch buttons, yet they do nothing other than show you what the keys do. If you're using a third-party hardware color calibrator, the calibrator device may block the display menu since the window cannot be moved. This is a very, very frustrating way to navigate. And if I do say so, a step back to the stone age of displays. This type of poor display configuration is what normally sets Wacom apart from the imitation brands. For instance, the older Wacom Desktop Center simply offered a control panel for display options with buttons and drop-down menus. Other than a bit of lag when launching the control panel, there was nothing bad about it at all. I don't get the rationale for the downgrade here. Maybe it makes the tablet setting more cross-compatible with operating systems? Who knows? Fortunately, other than setting the color to Adobe RGB and maybe tweaking the brightness, you should not have to enter this menu much. The price of the Cintiq Pro 27 is $3,499.95. That's one of Wacom's most expensive tablets to date, but relatively reasonable given the cost of everything having gone up so much in the last few years. That does it for the features of the Cintiq Pro 27. As I begin to wrap this review up, I'll share my overall opinion of the tablet. I'm happy to finally see my favorite model of display tablet receive an upgrade. Having a crisper display with a faster refresh rate, more accurate color, and better multi-touch and tilt is great, but I'm not enthusiastic about many of the other changes. A lot of what sets Cintiqs apart from other display tablets has been taken away. I'm sort of on the fence about this tablet, because although the newer model greatly improves the clarity and quality of the display I will be recording, the fan noise ruins the audio I'm capturing. At this point, it's hard to say if I'd rather work on the Cintiq Pro 27 than the Cintiq 27 QHD Touch. If the fan noise were mitigated, then I might be inclined to work past the other things I don't like about it. But at this point, the fan noise is sort of a deal breaker given my circumstances. Overall, I get the impression that some of the build feels rushed, or perhaps the cost was reduced by making the design less complex so that the price of this was not astronomical given the high cost of manufacturing and transportation. In either case, it feels like a downgrade rather than an upgrade in many respects. Maybe I'm wrong, and these changes were based on feedback from the Wacom community. Maybe a significant number of users don't like bezels or erasers. If that's the case, I'd say take those comments with a grain of salt. When users are happy with something, they just use it and don't have time to comment. It's usually the complainers who are the vocal ones, and they tend to be heard more. If I could have it my way, I'd simply take the display out of the Cintiq Pro 27 and put it into the Cintiq 27 QHD. That would make it more like a larger version of the Cintiq Pro 16. So should you buy the Cintiq Pro 27? It has been improved significantly, maybe even enough to make it worthwhile for folks who own the previous generations of Cintiqs, but only if you don't mind sacrificing some features as well. If you're currently using the Cintiq 27 QHD and are on the fence about upgrading, you still have one of the best tablets out there. If you're on a limited budget, I don't think it would be necessary to upgrade because you can still make great work on a QHD display with 2000 pressure levels. 
If you have the Cintiq Pro 24 or 32 and you're considering upgrading to the 27, I think it's a worthy upgrade if you care about the HDR support, the aesthetic of the faster refresh rate, the lower profile design, or maybe the layout of the express keys. Otherwise, you could stick with what you have because it's still a great device. If you don't own a Cintiq and you want a high-end model, technically speaking, this is the best drawing tablet money can buy. Although you may find that one of the previous generation models better suits your needs. I would at least consider all of your options. In my opinion, 27 inches is the ideal size. The 24 felt too small for me, and the 32 was just too big for my desk and required excessive arm movement. It's going to be a while before another iteration of the Cintiq Pro 27 is released, so this should last you for quite a few years before you'll need to upgrade again. I'll also quickly mention that there are smaller display tablets like the Wacom 1 that start at $350, so you have a lot of options depending on your needs. Check out my drawing tablet reviews for more information. There it was, a look at the Wacom Cintiq Pro 27. If you found this review helpful, hit that Aaron Rutten subscribe button and become a member if you want to join me on my journey to create digital art resources. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.